Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, thanks for joining. Today I am bringing you an all new story let's play, so I'm going to just go ahead and take us now into Cass and let you meet. So first and foremost we have Waylon Hartford, he is the father of this family and this is what he looks like. He is a businessman in the business career, he obviously, um, you know, is just <laughs> he's one of those older gentlemen that are just trucking along in his career and you know bringing home the the family stuff he has two watches on not really sure what that's about so let's take that off <clears throat> and so Waylon here has three kids in total with his wife and they reside in lovely Willow Creek and they are pretty posh well-to-do for themselves so as you can see he is an elder and he does have the super parent aspiration as well as he has the trait stunning I have you special traits receive. in my all right, he's happy about it. I have special um, traits in my game, so we'll just go through and I will read the description for you. But he has stunning. These Sims build relationships must fa much faster because they look stunning. What a pleasure to meet such a wonderful Sim. And he has the goofball trait. And then his third trait is daredevil. He, he is reckless and daring. They're very confident and active and are unaffected by stress. So for... Um, him i did just randomize all of his traits his wife is juliet hartford and this is her she has the aspiration of being a master chef so she is a chef or in the culinary career her traits are moody Kalu Abu Yab. Uh -huh. oh yeah these sims can experience sudden mood swings within a short period of time she is also a mysterious sim she builds friendships slightly slower but her romance she builds fast because of her mysterious looks and she's a coward she's afraid of everything that can and will go bump in the night they are scared of the dark and they will frequently faint when they're in dire situations so she is definitely going to be um well she's gonna be fun so she like i said is in the culinary career and i just want to go through her outfits with you as well and as we know she also as you can see is an elder actually you probably can't see that but now you can there she's an elder and like i said the two of them together have a lovely family they do have an adult son that lives out on his own um, so obviously the older brother of the twins, but yeah. So the first twin that we have is Kiera. She has the chief of mischief aspiration. She is a kleptomaniac and she is outgoing and she really is just something else. This one here, she is clearly, as you can tell, going to be a little bit of a rebel. She isn't afraid of anything and she's like, I'm going to do what I want when I want to do it and no one's going to stop me. So she is a teenager, both the twins, they're, they're teenagers, so they are in high school. These are her outfits. And as you can tell, she is, you know, definitely living that. I love this outfit on her. Like, it's probably my cute, like my favorite, but. So she is um, a little on the... <laughs> a little on the uh, dark side of like trouble right I think she's gonna be trouble and then this is Sierra her twin and she actually is the inspiration for this let's play so this is what Sierra looks like she is a painter extraordinaire she is a music lover and she is romantic so she obviously loves all things um, beauty related so she likes to play with musical instruments she likes to paint she likes laying outside and watching the clouds roll by she enjoys um, you know laying in a field of flowers and daydreaming her day away like this is that kind of person um, but also unfortunately when 
Kiera and Sierra were just toddlers, Sierra did get ill and she had a really, really high fever and that high fever ended up making her lose her hearing. So she is deaf and because she is deaf, she had a little bit different life than Kiera did. Like Kiera didn't have that issue. She can, she is hearing. And because of that, um, I think being that she pretty much lived her whole life in silence, I, I think she threw herself into the beauty of things that she appreciated the beauty in all things, even if they were different things. So while she is a music lover, she can't hear any of it. She can't, you know, hear the birds singing. She can't do any of those things. She enjoys them and she understands their beauty. She can feel the vibrations of the music and that's what moves her um, to be musical as far as being musically inclined and playing instruments of things of that nature. But she can't hear the beauty that she creates or that the world around her creates. And even though she's a positive, upbeat person, she also, I think, feels that, you know, she maybe didn't get um, the same type of, I guess, luxuries that her sister got. Like, she feels like she's missing out, so to speak. And so she wants to be able to hear. She wishes that she could be able to hear and because of that she is of the opinion that that's probably not not okay for a teenager let's put you in that okay love um so because of all of that she obviously is looking at the world around her and is just kind of like okay there has got to be something that can you know fix me I think she enjoys the fact that she is who she is and she she doesn't mind being deaf. I know a lot of people that are in the deaf community don't look at that as missing anything. Um, but I think that she being as that she loves music as much as she does, she does wish that she could hear. But on top of that, she's also a person that believes in mystery. She believes in the unknown and she believes in basically what else is out there other than us like there has to be magical beings you know she has stumbled across vampire lore and she's like everyone tells me i'm crazy this isn't real it's all just a hoax but deep down inside i really really feel like this is true so she's on a mission basically to find out is it true and if it is true if she were to become a vampire would vampirism cure her hearing and would it make her whole again and i think part of her right now as a teenager she is trying to find herself and trying to find where she belongs and so it may not even be a situation of her not accepting being deaf but i think it's more being curious about the unknown being curious about the what ifs so that is the journey that Sierra is going to be taking us on and her family does not understand at all why she wants to um, believe in these things and they have been trying to discourage her but unfortunately she is just not hearing them. She at the end of the day is a dreamer. and. Unfortunately, due to the fact that her and her twin sister are so polar opposites, she can't really confide in Kiera because Kiera's just like, Sierra, really, I, I don't care. <laughs> and I don't have time for this. And I, I have better things to, that I could be doing, like spray paint, painting someone's house or throwing eggs at cars or whatever teens do these days. So <clears throat> her parents don't understand and they just want her to forget about it all and just you know be the lovable daughter that you know she is for them and her twin is just like I don't have time for you and your nonsense and then she has her older brother who doesn't even live with them anymore um, and this here is her older brother so I will just hop in and let you guys see what he looks like so this is their older brother his name is Wesley 
and he lives on his own and I'll just hop through we will be seeing him some because obviously he's family so I I am sure he's probably going to come over and visit and things of that nature but that is Wesley and I do just want to go ahead and show you the home that the Hartfords live in so that we can see where they are so this house down here this is where Wesley lives so he lives in a one bedroom just here by himself and they live over here in this neighborhood so they live fairly close by and so we're gonna go and take a look at the Hartford residence As you can see, everyone is just outside here and they're just like hanging out, standing around. But this is the home that the Hartfords reside in. And I think it is a lovely neighborhood home. This is a save file. So I will put the um, description to the save file that I'm using for this game in the description link below so that you guys can go and check out the save file if you would like. But let's go ahead and do a tour of the home. Now I didn't change anything in this house with exception to Sierra's bedroom. And the reasoning for that was in this house there was um, two queen beds in two of the bedrooms and then in the room that I chose for Sierra it was like a um, child's room so it was fully decked out in child's things and I thought well you know what I need to make that more like her space so when you go into the house there's a foyer here and this is the study so they can come in here and they can read they can play on the computer they can watch television whatever their hearts desires there is a little bathroom here behind the stairs and their dining area and then their little kitchen just the right needs for this little family and then when you head upstairs off of the landing this is Sierra's room so as you can see, her room is whimsical and girly and it looks like the room of a dreamer. She's got, um, you know, a mural painted on her wall and her little desk area with a journal that she can journal her feelings. She's got some cross stitching stuff, a nice little swing chair. So I really, really like her room. I think it turned out absolutely adorable. And then this room here is the parents bedroom. And when you go down the hall, there is a chess table and another bookcase here. And then at the top of the stairs, if you head right, you can go into Kiera's room. So hers is a little bit darker, which kind of fits her a little bit better. And this is the upstairs bath. So I actually didn't change anything about this house. Like I said, this is all by the original creator. Um, of the save file so nothing was changed with exception to this bedroom here and that was just to make it more appropriate for Sierra and then off the kitchen there is a back door and you can go out here to the backyard and there is a um, little gardening area and a grill and a picnic table for them to come and eat and there's also a little um, jungle gym thing there um, from when the girls were small well and Wesley too so this is our lovely family with their home and I am really really excited to go ahead and jump in and get started with the characters in this story. So just as a um, kind of side note I did want to say they do have um, all of their traits as well as some skills. So aside from stunning and goofball and daredevil, he also can sign. So he does sign with Sierra. He has the jester uh, personality trait and the caregiver personality trait. So I do have slice of life as well as wonder um, wicked whims in the game. And those personalities come from that. And then he is domestic. As far as his uh, skills go, he has uh, level 8 charisma, level 7 logic, and he's at level 10 of parenting. And then we have Juliet, who is baking 3, gourmet cooking is 8, her cooking skill is maxed out at 10, she's a chef, and her parenting is at level 8. And I think the reasoning behind that is she worked a lot to climb the career of um, 
being in the culinary, she had to go to class and she had to study a lot and she had to learn all these recipes and she wasn't really fully involved in learning what her kids like, what her kids need. She was her, their mother, yes, but I think her relationship with them isn't as close as the father, um, just because she, as you can see, like she doesn't know sign language. She never took the time to learn. So she relies on everyone else in the house to be able to communicate to Sierra. And so I think that maybe when she was sick as a toddler, that hit her negatively and she couldn't ever accept the fact that something happened and I think part of her maybe blames herself as a mom. So <clears throat> that being said, she never learned that and because of that, her relationship with the family, the kids, I should say, just isn't as strong as the relationship that they have with their dad. So in addition to her traits that I showed you in Cass, she also has the everyman personality and she has the essence of flavor from her uh, culinary career. And then with Kiera, she is greedy and a lover and dastardly and obviously she can sign with her twin. Her skills, um, she has really a lot of negative. <laughs> I, I look at them as negative, but charisma is a level five, mischief at level six, persuasion at level three, like she's uh, mischief mischievous but she wants to like persuade you to let her get her way um she does play her video games and she is at a level two of um rolling because she has the fine art of rolling a perfect blunt so <laughs> she like i said is um she's a little bit trouble that one and for sierra she has um baking cooking guitar painting piano again vampire lore and violin so she can play all of the instruments um not perfectly but she's she's dabbled and she's getting into it i think she probably does struggle being that she can't hear what she's playing she has to go based on the vibrations but she is um she's getting there and that's all we can hope for with that so on top of her romantic and music lover she is deaf she has the innocent personality she can sign she is a beloved person so everyone remembers a beloved sim their relationships never fade she's an art lover and an artist um, it says she's neutral to being pregnant and she is I don't know why it says that actually because honestly let's remove that she's a teen we don't want her getting pregnant and she is a muser and she is distant so this is um, the teen has become distant. Being near and interacting with family has started to stress them out. The world just doesn't understand them. And I think that is really, really dead on for Sierra because unfortunately she has always been really, really close with her family, but recently they just don't get her. And she's like, I don't understand why you, you don't believe me and you keep discouraging me. And at the end of the day, like this is my life and and, and I believe this and why can't you just be supportive of what I believe and I think her parents are kind of like yep okay if you say so so um, that is pretty much where we stand I am actually gonna go ahead and um, say this one is it for this episode everyone's really happy but like she's going for a jog but anyhow um, she's like I'm so tense I have to leave so basically what I'm going to do is go ahead and call this episode and I will see you guys in the next one. This is, like I said, just an intro video so that you can meet the cast, look at their home and things of that nature. And we will be seeing them again very soon. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when a new episode goes live. And I will see you guys in episode one of our Hartford family. Bye, y'all.